Okay, we're well, here, here with Tom here. Ruck and Hank Elder. Hank, what did you uh, accomplish over this uh, 2018 Memorial Day? Uh, sorry, a Veterans Day at the LA National Cemetery. Well, last night was the last of our three readings of World War One veterans buried in the sacred grounds of Los Angeles National Cemetery. And we actually saved 12, so we read 12,888, saved 12 out, which we read today. And my grandfather, who is buried here as well, I brought his World War II uniform he retired in, but he served in World War I. So we put his uniform in a chair over there to sit with all of us and be with us for the day. And then I was able to read a poem that I wrote in honor of, to him, reaching 100 years like Flanders Fields and saying thank you and we carry the torch now and we're about peace and freedom because in the end I've never met a soul and I'm a member of squadron 283 of post 283 American Legion I've yet to meet a veteran that said I love killing people I love war what they say is I love when peace comes and that's what we fight for so we remembered that that these Americans the 53,333 who died in World War One that did that so that we might live in freedom. People are not aware necessarily that uh, that the Southwest was in jeopardy before the U.S. got into World War I because uh, the Germans were planning to team up with the Mexicans to recapture... Uh, well, the Zimmerman Peck telegram is a legendary telegram that the Germans knew Ger Mexico couldn't act on it, but they knew that if they could get them agitating at the border, like Pancho Villa type of action, right. that it could keep us out of the war. Yes, I already told them that. But the problem was it was a Hail Mary throw. What really caused us to go there, and here's an interesting statistic. We declared war in April of 1917. We actually didn't get any troops over there until April of 1918 because we had 100,000, no planes, no, no trucks, no way, no weapons. So it took us a year to gear up, but when we went over there, between uh, September 27th and November 11th, we lost 27,555 American lives in 45 days. It's never happened in any war we've been in, and it never happened. And the reason we did that is because, as you suggested, the Germans were trying through attrition to have a negotiated peace. When the Americans threw themselves at, first the Marines in June took them out of, out of uh, Bella Woods, which they'd been in since 1914, and then the U.S. Army took them out of the Meuse-Argonne tract, which they had sat, and the Germans capitulated completely. Because of that sacrifice, because the British and the French, they didn't leave their trenches anymore. So when they went over there, they went over there to bring peace, quickly and they sacrificed. Uh -huh. the, uh, they sunk the Lusitania. Yes, that was obviously the, the key ingredient when they, had under, when they declared submarine warfare on all of us, whether it was civilian or not. And in, in general, um, I believe like World War II, the Americans knew that they needed to be involved in this war. To uh, The thing that people don't realize is that up until then, thousand-year-old monarchies existed and kept people under the thumb as my poem said, but because of the valor of all those soldiers, the 18 million that died, the monarchies were all but destroyed. Now out of it came Soviet Union, came civil rights movement. It's completely traced back to the African Americans returning back from World War I and saying, you can't treat us like this anymore. We fought for freedom and we deserve freedom as much as the white soldiers. Uh -huh. So if Mexico was part of a movement to reconquer the Southwest, from the essentially from uh, the Rio Grande, te from Texas to the Pacific Ocean, isn't there still a movement now today among uh, both Mexicans and Mexican Americans that California and parts of the Southwest ought to be reconquered, returned to Mexico? Well, my wife is a Mexican, and they came up from Chihuahua in escaping from Pancho Villa, and her point is that this was Spanish land. And we took it from them, and we did. And there, there's no doubt about it that that. But that's that's how the how the it, they took it from the Indians. Mm -hmm. So in essence, there's a sequence of events to all property ownership in a way. Okay. And uh, the the World War One was about acquiring real estate, and they did Alsace Lorraine, which is what Hitler fought for later. Um, what I would suggest to you is that. Um, the invasion is being done more in the line of um, 
reaching back to their roots, which were in this country. And if you watch Ramon, if you read the book Ramona, you know that there was a very vibrant Spanish adobe style lifestyle, which was destroyed with the advent of the, the white man to the West Coast. Um, I don't believe that Mexico has the capacity and nor the will to create a war with us. Not a war, but uh, a guerrilla movement, uh, a, a socialist, you know, communist guerrilla movement. That's uh, if you go down on May Day, you see that here. It's hard to it's hard to argue with the fact that that unfortunately my grandfather is spinning in the grave a hundred yards that way because the democracy he fought for no longer exists in this country. We are a socialist entity, and we are far more communist than we are social than we are democratic. So we've leaned way away from what these men thought they were coming back to when they fought a representative form of government. The, the minority is tyrannizing the majority. And so unfortunately, uh, back to Jefferson and, and the Federalist Papers, they were worried about the majority tyrannizing the minority and the pendulum has swung back. So what the Mexican Americans have figured out is that there's power in the ballot and the ballot is being used as a weapon rather than a way to voice your opinion, individual opinion on yeah. the, how the country should run. Uh -huh. It's a collective mentality versus an independent individual. Uh -huh. And that, these guys, they were all about the individuality and being a part of a greater United States. By these guys, you mean the, those buried here? The ones under our feet in these sacred grounds. These men fought for a freedom that we don't enjoy anymore. They would be shocked that people are not allowed to say what's on their mind that they're being shouted down or that people are actually going to their homes and accosting their children and saying things to their children that are not relevant uh -huh. to the open debate that goes in in politics because politics is tough. You're referring to uh, the mob that uh, protested outside Tucker Carlson's I home. I could be, but, I, but I, there's so many other things that have happened over the last 10 years. Uh -huh. He's just indicative of what has been it's happening. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, the aspect of violence, I'm rereading Lenin. And they are all, they're all true believers. They are travelers, and they believe that by violence, socialism will overcome the capitalist system. Uh -huh. so, would you say that the, uh, the uh, immigration from Central America into, into the United States, particularly the Southwest, is necessarily politically benign? Mm, no, because they want a better lifestyle. And when you want a better lifestyle, it's not politically benign. They come here with a purpose. They want to participate in the one place in the world where you can come as a peasant, work hard, be patient, and own things. In their own country, they wouldn't flee if they could do that. So they come here with a mission. They want a part of the capitalist system. What they don't understand as being illegal is the complexities that make democracy a responsibility, not a right. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's a right, but it's not to be taken for granted. You don't vote in a mass mentality. You study the, the issues and you only put things on the ballot that are important for the us, not the I. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But is the, are the majority of... Uh, when I say us, I mean United States. Yeah, yeah. But are, are the majority of uh, uh, Latino immigrants who come here, are they uh, coming for work or for welfare or for both? I'd say work. Work is welfare. If you, if you work hard enough, you'll pay for things, you'll buy things, you'll get a home, you get a car, you get medical insurance. That's welfare, but it's hard work. Uh -huh. In their own country, they can work as hard as they want and they don't make money. What about state benefits though? Uh, education, hospital? You know what, like I said, we're leaning towards a socialist entity. And the sad part is I've talked to young people and they are willing to t give 51% of what they make, which is the definition of a socialist government. Right in order to maintain peace. So these young people, they believe that by giving the money back, you're keeping these people from, quote, revolting. So it's a very complex question you ask. It's not simple as, yeah. as it used yeah. to be. Yeah. I don't even know who the enemy is anymore. I don't, you know, socialism has become such an acceptable, and I'm, again, rereading Lenin. I even read Goebbels. And I gotta tell you, the propaganda machine that was behind much of what we see came right out of his book. In what we're seeing today? Yes. And Lenin. They're all, and remember, it wasn't the Nazis. It was the National Socialist Party. Right. The socialists were very violent and very much into, and the Bolsheviks were violent. Yeah. And Lenin promulgated a, a revolution that didn't end until 1922. Uh -huh. That's four years after the war ended. Uh -huh. uh, 
So they believe in violence. I don't. I believe that our system, properly respected, has the capability of changing things. Yeah. Uh, how concerned are you about the leftist, uh, socialist draw of the Democrat Party these days? The Democratic Party is not a party, it's a parliament. And what the Democrats have done, which is an abomination to the original intent of our political parties, yes. is that you, that's why you don't have a Green Party, you don't have a Communist Party, you don't have a Bolshevik Party in this country, because they're all in the Democratic Party. They're constantly parliamentarying within the party. That's why their platform is so strange, because they keep the Green Party happy. And then the Green Party, who tried to form a candidate, backed off because they knew they'd be taking votes for the Democrat, which is how it works in Europe. The Green Party, the Communist Party, the Socialist Party, the Workers' Party, they're all separate parties. The Democratic Party is not a party. It is an abomination. It is a parliamentary system within a democracy. And that's why it's so, dif it's so difficult to get our head around it, because the Republicans function as a party. They're pretty easy to figure out. Their planks right out there. They like capitalism, they like free enterprise, they don't like taxes. Well, but we do have, uh, within the Republican Party, we do have uh, segments of uh, conservatism and extremism. And we'll all allow that voice to be heard. But in the end, it's not a vote, it's the platform. And you don't want to be a Republican, don't be a Republican. But generally, if you're not a Republican, you can't be a Green. You can't be an environmental party. You cannot, cannot be a communist party, which is what you see in Europe. Within the parliament is different parties. That's why I use that term. In this country, we don't have a two-party system. We have a one-party system, the Republicans. The other one's a parliamentary system that, that's a cobbled together to function. Coalitions. Coalitions that cut deals within a party, which shouldn't be. Those parties should be separate and cutting deals within the, the democratic system, not within the political party. So when people are voting Democrat, they may in fact be voting for socialists, you're saying? Totally. Or they're not. But they're voting Democratic because there's some platform in there they agree with. And unfortunately, they're so gray, I don't even know what the Democratic Party stands for anymore, except I think that they, 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 because they are about the state giving things away, they're far more socialist. But they always were. So, I mean, Roosevelt was a socialist. Let's cut to the chase. He created Social Security. Social Security. And you know what the worst part is? The VA itself. What is the VA? What is it? It's an entity. It's, a, it's actually, the, the sheer definition of communism is that the state owns the property. Okay. This property is owned by who? The government. Thank you. And where does the money come from that funds it? It's not, a, it doesn't create income. It takes income. Okay. So unfortunately, this, this VA is a fascinating entity. Oh, oh the complexity of, not just a cemetery, you're saying all the- but All of the VA. It's a government service. It is. And, and, and what's the most important government service? Saving lives. And we have a fire here that's a direct result, I would say, of the government failing to put into place proper protocols. How is that possible? Uh, what protocols are you referring to? Well, you, got, you know that when you're building neighborhoods in old wood forests, they're going to burn. And so where's the management? And, you know, then they pillar a president who has the courage to say, where's the management? You're taking federal funds onto the, onto the lands to do uh, management, but you're not. Look at the fires. They're tinders. Right. And we know that we're abnormally hot. We don't rain. We just, we don't pare it down. It's hard work. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah, yeah. But are you saying that it's uh, politics, local politics, that, that's letting these lands being used for, uh, for mansions? It's hard to say. That's an interesting question. I just think that the growth of, of the population in L.A. is not in direct, direct proportion to managing where they're growing. And they're growing in areas that have always had a fire problem. And then all of a sudden there's fires and people are shocked. And it's, you know, it's like, well, all you have to do is study that this is where fires happen. And they've been happening here every 100 years, 150 years, because that's how nature works. It burns down the old growth, yeah. and out of it, poppies come up, then trees. It's the way nature is. Yeah. So I think it's an, an abnormal mentality to think that these fires are abnormal. What, what's abnormal is building stuff on areas which are naturally fire habitat.
And I, and I can't answer that because I'm not in the zoning business. I'm just saying that we've had three years of serious fires. Is this a federal matter or is it a matter for the state government? I said, I, I, you know what? I'm a state's rights person by nature. I believe the federal government has a place in helping the states out because things can become expensive. And I'm always a believer in the Army Corps of Engineers, which is a very bright group of people that can figure things out. So I, you know, when I stand on these grounds, this is where the battles used to end. People understood that they fought so that this country would go on. And I know there's a lot of fear that it's not going on. We don't know now where it's not, headed. What, this what, country. What, what, oh. People don't, don't, they can't see 10 years down the road anymore. Where the country's heading. Yeah. And what do you think of the divisiveness in our society uh, between, uh, I mean, uh, from liberals against Republicans and conservatives? It doesn't typically go the other way, does it? Well, it does, but we're, we, you know, Tucker Carlson, for example, he tends to agitate through his verbal capacity and his intellect versus the people that I see that may overreact in that case. They're intellectually stunted. And so they can't argue with him, so they have to violently try to overthrow him. Right. And that, I, I don't agree with that. But on the other hand, if you're a Leninist, Stalinist, Maoist, uh, Marxist, you believe in the violent overthrow. And you do, if you're a true believer, you believe that violence is the only answer. And you have no place in our society. You have a chance to voice, but if you're violent, you go to jail. But isn't that what's being advocated as uh, not only acceptable, but required uh, behavior by people like Maxine Waters? I don't point individuals out. I think Maxine Waters, I actually am raising money for a World War I monument that features Henry Johnson, an African-American that was incredibly heroic, that was wounded 18 times while taking on 20 SS stormtroopers in World War I, not SS, but stormtroopers, forgive me. And uh, he didn't even get a Purple Heart. So the anger that's there is justified. Our country fell short when it came to actually creating equality. So the Republican parties have some answering to that. And I'm, I'm the Southern conservatives that have the most answer to. When the civil rights came into being a reality, they fought it, they still fight it. And I'm, I'm an absolute, you can fly the battle flag, but don't do it over city hall. Wasn't it the Democrats who were the continuers of uh, slavery in the South? <laughs> That's a very, but that's, but that's a simple knee-jerk reaction because they hated Lincoln, and Lincoln was the party of Republican. They were always Republicans, but they couldn't vote Republican because what's a, more of the abomination is the Democrats that negotiated. So, like I said, <laughs> he could he, he could probably take that. If it fits it, if it fits. It. So the point is, is that the lens cap fits. This is the Democratic Party, which is not a party because they would have stood against that. It's a coalition of parliamentary negotiating, and they've negotiated with the slave owners since the end of Civil War. And they're all going Republican because now that Lincoln's long since dead. So I'm, you know, as my, I, I get your, your thinking, and I'm a conservative by nature, but I have, ha I'm what the African Americans call woke. I am now woke to the, to the crimes of my white ancestors in terms of not reacting quicker to the lynching, burnings, the abomination to the human, human condition in our own country. And we can come to grips with it, but we have a problem there. And I, don't, I, I would have thought the Democratic Party would have taken care of that a long time ago. Because they espouse this, but the African Americans are still being left in the, in the background. So Maxine Waters is a, is a very vocal, very agitating person for a reason. She stays in attention and people take her seriously. And that's what has to be done for the African Americans in this country. Um, if I can just uh, 